Good afternoon. My name is Steve Matty. I'm chair of the Committee on Standards and Ethics. Uh, I've been joined by my fellow committee members, Council Members Levin, Chin, Kozowitz, and Gibson. We've also been joined by Council Member Adams, who was invited by this committee. We will now continue our meeting on this matter, which first began on October 11, 2018. The committee's agenda for this hearing is straightforward. We are meeting today to assess and address an alleged violation of the city's conflict of interest law and are using our express powers under the charter to appropriately and conclusively resolve this matter, which was opened on October 11th. More specifically, approximately two months ago, this committee was made aware of a purported violation by Council Member Adrian Adams of the city's prohibition on superiors asking their subordinates to volunteer or otherwise participate on political campaigns. At the committee's direction, the General Counsel's Office immediately undertook an investigation of these allegations. This investigation opened on the same day the purported behavior was identified. This committee then worked with the General Counsel's Office to carry out an exhaustive and comprehensive investigation into the alleged infractions. During this time, this committee also held me meetings pursuant to Public Officers Law Section 103A to stay up to date on the progress of the investigation and ensure that all relevant facts were gathered. As a result of and based upon these regular briefings from the Office of the General Counsel as to the results of the investigation, this committee ultimately concluded by vote earlier today that a violation of Chapter 68 of the New York City Charter had taken place. Specifically, the committee and the General Counsel's joint investigation confirmed that a staffer in Council Member Adams' office had been approached by one of her superiors about volunteering for certain political campaigns. The same staffer was then directed to volunteer for certain political campaigns. While none of these campaigns involved the council member, nor did the council member directly order the staffer to engage in these activities, Chapter 68 was violated the moment the council member authorized the, request, the requesting of a staffer to engage in political activities. Based upon these findings, the committee concluded that a violation of Chapter 68 had taken place and appropriate responsive action was warranted. The committee also voted to send a letter to the Co Conflict of Interest Board after today's meeting, notifying the board of the committee's action with respect to this matter. In calling and holding this meeting, we hope to bring this matter to a resolution. To that end, we will now invite Council Member Adrian Adams to make a statement to the committee. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon, committee members. I'm here to take responsibility and apologize for violating the city's conflict of interest law. It recently came to my attention that senior staff in my office requested that a subordinate staffer volunteer on political campaigns and that I inadvertently consented to this conduct. At the time, I didn't realize that asking staff if they wanted to volunteer, but not requiring or rewarding it, could nevertheless be considered a form of coercion. Naively, I thought that so as long as staff was free to decline, there was not a problem if one staffer invited other staffers to volunteer. As a result, at least one member of my staff was asked to volunteer on their own time and without using any council resources. Since this came to my attention, I have made it abundantly clear to my staff that there will never be a request to work on a political campaign while they work for me, and that I will not ask anyone to volunteer for any candidate or political activity, nor will I in any way tolerate staffers who engage in this prohibited conduct. I have recently requested, and my staff and I have completed an in-depth training by the Office of the General Counsel, and I have explicitly instituted a zero tolerance policy on such behavior in my office. My staff is now fully aware that this is strictly prohibited, and my chief of staff has been spoken to about assuring that this does not happen again. In addition, I have personally met with our chief EEO and diversity officer to discuss the issue and reviewed in detail, along with my entire staff, the Charter's restrictions and prohibitions on political activities and volunteering. We all now understand that merely asking a staffer, asking if a staffer would like to volunteer is a violation of the rules. This has been a tremendous learning experience for me and for my staff. We will not make this mistake again, and you have my apology for having done so. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Adams. Um, I and members of this committee appreciate your candor in, in coming before the committee to publicly discuss this matter. It is never easy to discuss matters like these in such a public forum, and your commitment to appear before us today in display and a display of such transparency is a powerful statement and a valuable service to all of our colleagues in the council. 
We are, by our very design, a political body, and your testimony today will no doubt serve as an example of potential pitfalls as it relates to this issue. With that said, and with the council member's statement entered into public record, it is time for the committee to bring this matter to a close. As the council member noted, and this committee agrees, her breach of the city's conflict rules arose out of a misunderstanding of the nature of the prohibition on superiors asking subordinates to volunteer in political campaigns. As she also noted, council member Adams and her staff received an in-depth training on this prohibition by the general counsel's office, which was extremely important to this committee. The council member also instituted a strict zero tolerance policy regarding this behavior and assured this committee that this would never happen again and never be tolerated. Beyond this, and as we witnessed ourselves today, the council member came before this committee and candidly discussed this very sensitive episode in her political and professional life. Most importantly, she has offered today's apology and a statement as a learning opportunity for all public officials and public servants in the city. This committee has also voted at my request to recommend that each council member receive additional specialized training on prohibited political activities from the general counsel's office in 2019. With all this noted and borne in mind, I am satisfied that the council member has been held accountable both personally and publicly for her infraction, and this matter is ready for conclusion and closing. But before I make a motion to close, I just want to remind everyone that this committee is bound by a confidentiality agreement not to discuss this matter further. As such, I am making a motion that we close this matter and take no further action at this time. Is there a second for the motion? I, rec I recognize council member uh, Kozowitz and Levin. Um, and all those in favor of closing this matter say aye. 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 Recognizing the ayes, I will now close this matter and adjourn this hearing. Thank you.